really have a true science when it is accepted in science and a true technology when all the phenomenology is thoroughly worked out and thoroughly understood when all the models are redone so that we adequately can model this theoretically and we can do engineering we can sit down and design the circuits they'll work every time we'll have components on the shelf we can buy assemble and they work we're not at that stage today we are at a stage today which is the birth of the baby we're not at the stage where it's already a teenager running around playing uh, playing baseball on the baseball lot we're at the birth of the baby and the birth is very difficult because it's opposed by so many interests the orthodox scientific community still uh, very adamantly oppose it because they think that it's nonsense they think that it's this old idea of perpetual motion in a closed system creating energy from nothing and that is nonsense you can't do that uh, there are very strong and very powerful economic interests in the world probably the strongest economic interest in the world which are adamantly opposed to it uh, can you see what this does to the oil rich nations uh, can you see eventually can you see what this will do to many things now actually what it'll do you'll phase the oil petrochemical industry won't go away you still need the oil for the materials that's in it and the chemicals and so it'll be more and more petrochemical industry rather than keep burning and wasting the oil and putting all the pollutants in the uh, biosphere so many things will readjust uh, it's going to wrest control from a lot of the great wealthy control barons who now dominate uh, largely the economic world and their world is going to change now what you're going to see I would predict uh, and we'll see if history bears this out when those barons really realize that this stuff is for real and it can be made to work and with the internet and with free publishing and computers and everything they can no longer contain the information and it's very embarrassing to keep killing the inventors that they stopped that about 15 years ago uh, at some point you're going to see an overwhelming availability of funds become available when the funds become available the scientists will change over into it because they go where the money goes they're bought and paid for simple as that you can't do research unless you got the funds you cut off the research grants professor gets without a job he, he leaves the university and so science is simply bought and paid for in this country and much of the world when the money goes the science will go to it now that will put the sharp young graduate student on it finally with some funds to do the experiments and work on their doctorates and so forth you will have a very rapid assimilation and advancement of a totally new and extended electromagnetic science at the time. You get to a certain stage in scientific development, sometimes to stages where you're faced with problems and barriers and you sort of forced to rethink and go in different directions. I think we're seeing that one of those peculiar time periods in the history of science where we're going to overturn some cherished models, not, not too much, but make some changes and they'll open the door to an enormous amount of new technology in electricity and magnetism in nuclear reactions in motor development in battery applications in space flight in perhaps in anti-gravity uh, I think there are in, in creating scarce elements from plentiful elements I think we have just reached a plateau now where the the world's door is opening to what a millennium of new science we're talking about real life hardware we're talking about experiments in science that are telling us beyond any reasonable doubt that we have technologies that will enable us to be free from the bondage that we now feel free from uh, some of these economic uh, constraints that we've created for ourselves because you see if energy is free and it will be very shortly food is free, housing is free, then we're free to create our, our, express our creative gifts and not be like drones. And we're also free to explore our greater selves. And it's going to be a very exciting time coming up. The future of the world, as seen by conventional thinkers, or even many far-reaching thinkers, is uh, tame compared to what a coal fusion and free energy is going to do. No aspect of human culture will be untouched by the, this energy revolution. The very fact that the material that covers 70% of the, the, the planet's surface will now be available as a fuel source, and the, and the uh, fact that water makes up 
a huge percentage of our bodies, and this is a fuel and a source of energy. This is going to have incredible uh, psychological and religious and historical and geopolitical implications. The Middle East uh, picture and the strength of the uh, oil interests there is going to be drastically altered. Uh, air pollution will be abolished in most cities that are now affected by the internal combustion engine. And uh, space travel, which is a favorite subject of mine, will be transformed. The ability to travel to the planets and to the stars will be um, given a gigantic boost, one that I never in my lifetime expected uh, as an engineer who deals with those things. Some people are saying that the title of my book, The Coming Energy Revolution, is uh, a bit fearsome, that uh, revolution implies a sudden radical change and that uh, the status quo uh, will suffer and uh, that people whose jobs depend on the status quo will, will suffer. Uh, so perhaps evolution is a uh, better to way, way to look at it. But one way or another, our leaders, our political leaders, our uh, business leaders, our utility company executives have to address the changeover to clean energy sources. And it'll probably come from abroad, so it probably will happen fairly fast. I'm not really concerned myself about a radical shift because people seem to be on the verge of readiness for change. A lot of fear but also some positive anticipation. And maybe it takes an unraveling of what we have to put together a cleaner, more sane world. Is mankind ready? Do we have the maturity to handle it? Are we giving matches to a baby? That's, that's the question. Well, the first answer is we're kind of backing ourselves against the wall. If we maintain the status quo, we're doomed anyway. It looks like we're going to get a shot by having this energy available to us. If we're not mature enough to handle it, well, I guess we're doomed either way. We have a chance to survive, a chance to go on, but it will take, in a way, a consciousness transformation, understands their consciousness movement and things like that, that people are starting to wake up. It's not just a me game now. It's a we game, and as we learn to work together and have empathy for one another, we can transcend the old selfish consciousness, which has caused all the problems and all the wars and everything else, into a recognition that we are a planetary being. We've only been able to present a handful of inventors and their remarkable devices in this program, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people worldwide, scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, who are actively working right now, researching and developing this phenomenal technology to the point where it can be successfully scaled up and mass marketed. We are at a pivotal crossroads in human history. Can we as a society release our fears associated with the violence of the past and embrace the unknown? Can we cast aside our rigid skepticism in favor of an open-minded spirit of inquisitiveness. Our very survival may depend on how we answer these questions. We hope we've given you enough of the necessary information with which you may base your future decisions regarding this exciting new field, one that will soon affect all of our lives and the very fate of our planet Earth as well. I'll see you at the finish line. The race is on.